One of the big messages that the Lord has had me speak in the last two years is that as people have looked at the world and seen the world being disrupted by being connected, the message that God has had me speaking is that when you look at the story of Scripture, when you look at the history of the church, that so often those moments when God advances His church, He expands and multiplies His kingdom. His people grow in faith. They share the gospel. The Holy Spirit's power is present. At those moments of renewal, revival, and awakening, so often they are preceded by crises. Crises precedes renewal. And so Israel at this point in time found themselves on the border coming into this new promised land of flourishing and honey and valleys and hills and pomegranates and copper and and human flourishing under the lordship of God. But also this was an invitation into a deeper walk, a renewal, a revival of humans' relationship with God. And I believe that in the midst of the many crises we see in the world, particularly this crisis which we are living through now in this pandemic, we also live on the precipice of a renewal. That when people around us are fearing about what is happening in the world, that those moments when it seems darkest, that's actually often the moment before dawn breaks. So border crossings, that moment before you transit, that liminal space when in a sense, figuratively, you have your passport in hand, that's a moment you need to be attentive even if the journey has been long. Why? Because what God is teaching Israel here is They can't wait to get into this new land. We can't wait to move into a period where God advances and gives spiritual power to our churches, to our movements, to your movement. But there are key lessons that are actually delivered in the wilderness transition time. The flourishing that was to come, the scriptures tell us, is actually linked to the discipline and forming that was happening in the wilderness. That there were lessons of relying on God. This this mention here in verse 3 where it says, He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. This is a vital spiritual lesson that the link between physical and spiritual hunger is close. Then as Israel then went into this promised land, this new creation, that it would be easy in the flourishing to forget the lessons of the wilderness. This was more than a border crossing. This was an invitation into a new dependency. And I believe that in the middle of the difficulties that we face, whether that's COVID-19 or whatever is happening in your context or a more contested, chaotic world, that there are actually lessons of dependency in this time, gold to be found in the mud that God is actually placing before us. There is a temptation at moments like this. To forget that lesson of dependency, to instead to try to take back control and step into planning and prediction. There are so many predictions flying around the world at the moment. You just have to open the newspaper and see opinion piece after expert predicting what's going to happen with the economy, what's going to happen with the pandemic, what's going to happen with technology, what's going to happen in the world. But in many ways, the future is open. We don't know what the future looks like as human. God does, but we don't. And so often then we use planning and predicting as a way of regaining control. But at the same time, we let go of the hand of dependency upon the father. And I think there's a lesson in the chaotic environment of the 21st century of a more connected, chaotic global culture that actually what it's teaching us is, no, we can't plan. 
But in the lack of planning that we're able to do because the future is so fluid, there is a gospel invitation to live in a new dependent way, which is the lesson of the wilderness. The first thing we need to remember when we look forward, and it's really hard to see a plan, is that we don't need a plan because we actually have a person, the person of Jesus. Israel was being reminded in Deuteronomy 8 that all through the wilderness, things had gone well when the people, like children dependent upon their father, simply moved when the presence of God went ahead of them. They camped when the presence of God stopped, and they moved when the presence of God went ahead of them. We may not have a plan, but we have a person. And in a chaotic 21st century, we are being invited closer to him. Less looking for control, more looking for Christ. Secondly, we may not have a plan, but we have access to power. Holy power that comes from the Spirit of God. The internet revolution is creating all kinds of shifting powers. Newspapers that once used to be powerful lose power. There is shifting power to startup tech companies. The world is seeing countries that are becoming powerful, others that were once becoming less powerful. The shift of power around the world is incredible at this point in time. But in the midst of that, as people feel a loss of power, which is so much of the frustration in the world at this point in time, we must remember that as believers, there's a different kind of power to reconnect with in this time. The power that comes from staying close to the presence of God. Watchman Nee said that an awareness of The presence of God comes when we first realize that we are actually his possession. I believe that believers can flourish in the chaotic context of the 21st century when we realize that we are not our own. That we actually give up pretenses to earthly power and instead we stay in the presence of the Father, realizing we're his. And when we do that, we connect ourselves to the only inextinguishable power source in the world, which is the Holy Spirit's power. And Israel in Deuteronomy 8 was being reminded who was the source of power. And when we have success, we're so tempted to rely on our own power. As it says in verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Well, at the moment when we can't predict the future or we don't know where things are going to go, it is so much easier to not fall into that temptation because we are powerless at this point in time. But that's an invitation in the crisis of feeling powerlessness is an invitation into the power that comes from dwelling in the presence of God. We may not have a plan, but we can adopt a posture, an orientation to actually understand and follow in the footsteps of God. The American strategist, John Boyd, discovered a whole new context when he became one of the first fighter pilots to fight in jet fighters. And everything that he'd learned in propeller planes went out the window when all of a sudden he realized that he was in this new super fast environment of jet fighters fighting each other, where life and death decisions can be made in a second. And he realized at that point in time, the person who prevails in jet air battle is actually the one who understands the orientation of where they're connected to the ground. Because you could, in a jet, all of a sudden think you're the right way up and the next thing you're barreling into the ground. And he said that those who were going to flourish in a chaotic environment that the 21st century was going to look like was those who were able to quickly orientate themselves. And I just want to say and speak out that one of the reasons that I said yes to this invitation, my good friend John Tyson said, these guys, new friends, they want you to speak and you should do it 
because they're one of the organizations who holds together so well word and spirit. And I believe at this time, as we are faced with the glut of information, of false, fake news, of conspiracy theories, of, of constant commentary, of heresies coming at a rapid rate, those who flourish in the chaotic soil of the 21st century are going to be those who are orientated by staying close to the Father. And the horizon points for us are word and spirit. And I think that's something that marks your organization. That is something that you need to cherish and hold on to as you move forward into the next century. 